Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today we're going to go over how to create caustics. So when we're looking at an underwater scene here, which by the way you can download at academicphoenixplus.com, you can see that when we render it, when there's water, we should be able to see some sort of caustic. So caustics is basically light refracting through the water so that it gives nice light patterns due to the water. Arnold, the way it renders things, um, it can't really calculate caustic based on light. It actually calculates this based on the camera. So therefore we have to fake our caustics and I'm gonna show you how. There's really a fun way of doing this. So um, already, if you guys uh, download the file, there in your source images, you'll find something called frames. And in here, you'll find these caustic uh, renders that have already been done for us. So it's uh, it should be a repeating texture. And therefore, as the animation continues on, you'll be able to, uh, it's going to mimic this reflection or this uh, caustic appearance. So we're going to fake it. All right, so let's go ahead and create a light. I'm going to be using a spotlight. I'm going to panel, look through selected and I'm going to aim it at probably around the tires so I can get a nice effect. Something like this, maybe we can pull it back a little bit. So maybe something like this, or even bigger if we need to. Cool. So now that we have these this set up, let's go ahead and see what we find. Let's go back to our camera or perspective, whoops, perspective. We're going to press play and we're not going to see much of an effect because the light is so pale. So let's increase our intensity. And I'm also going to hide my dome. So windows outliner, let's go ahead and look for that light dome and hide it. Control H. All right, let's see what we have. So our light's super dark. Oh, I can see a little bit. Let's go ahead, go back to our spotlight. Um, let's open up Arnold. Let's increase our exposure. Let's uh, go ahead and change it to three. Maybe that's not enough. We can change it to five. So now we're starting to see the light. There's a fish there. We can get some nice angles. You can see the shadow. Cool. So now that we have this effect, this is where our caustics is going to affect our scene. I'm going to go ahead and press stop. So the way to make this work is that we want to be able to see a texture attached to our light. So if we scroll down, we're going to find something called light filters. When we click on add, there are a couple of filters that we can add. And one of them is called Gobo. Go ahead and add that. And now we have an AI Gobo. If you know anything about film, uh, a Gobo is a texture that you put in real in front of a, a real light when you're filming. So uh, they use this to mimic uh, real life in Arnold. So we're going to double click on this and you're going to notice that it's got this little icon. It means that it's can't really render on its own. And then we have this thing called a slide map. A slide map is exactly what it sounds like. It is a map. This is where you put a texture. So we're going to go ahead, go to our outputs. Let's go to a file, click on that little folder and then go to frames and select the first one. Awesome. So we're going to go and check it out what that looks like right now. And right away, we can see an effect. We are seeing a little bit of caustics. It's a little weak and they're actually kind of big, but uh, we can fix that with our placement node. So to the right over here in our tabs, there's a placement node and let's increase it by three by three. This is under repeat UVs. So I'm getting a nicer effect. I want it a little bit more intense, maybe five by five. Mm, I'm kind of liking that look. We'll see. Let's hit this, which means uh, go back to the file and then we click on this one again, which is going to get get us back into the gobo. Let's go back to the actual light itself. So I'm going to click on my light and I might want to make this a little bit stronger. So let's think we can either increase our intensity or there we go. We're starting to see some nice effects. Now, if you were doing a still, this might actually be pretty nice. So we can bring back our sky dome. Maybe reduce the intensity of our sky dome. And once we add our sky dome and reduce the intensity of the sky dome, we might have to act to be able to see the caustics here. You might actually have to boost the intensity as well. So you always have to kind of play around. But what if we wanted this to be animated? 
what if we wanted this to, as we, our fish is swimming around, we actually wanted this to uh, act like caustics. Let me reduce the intensity of this again. This is my dome. Then I go back to my lights, maybe increase this by 30 and my exposure by 10. So these are pretty big numbers, but remember the texture itself is actually pretty dark. So now we're getting some interesting effects. Let's add some color. Um, let's see if we can make it a little bit blue. And our sky dome is already a little bit blue. So let's add a little bit more blue. There we go. Now we're getting some interesting Kind of look fun fun appearance all right so what if we wanted to actually animate this let's say our fish are swimming around and we wanted to animate this so we have to go into our gobo scroll down double click on the ai gobo and click on here which is the output which is connected to our checker and we can click something called use image sequence and right away you're going to notice that when i start going to press play to the next scene it will change Actually, let me just grab a little so it doesn't have to render the whole thing. And then if I go to the next one, you're going to notice that it's actually moving around, which is great. Now, the issue, though, is once I get to frame 19, suddenly everything gets blown out. And the reason why is because our caustic textures only finish at frame 16. So it basically runs out and it doesn't know how to continue on. So what we have to do is tell it, all right, just go ahead and loop the animation so that it continuously uh, rotates. So that way, if it goes to 16 plus 17, it will continue using, it would just kind of loop the animation. So to fix that, we need to go to right click, edit expression. So again, notice that this is purple, which means that it's got an expression. Right click, edit expression. And notice that it basically says it's gonna read the file, the extension equals frame. So that means that it recognizes the frame. So what do we do? Well. Uh, I'm going to be the first one to be honest and say that uh, I actually have very little knowledge in scripting. I know enough to get myself in trouble, but in this case, I just wanted to repeat. So if I'm not really sure of, of how that works, I usually just look up, look it up on the internet and then I find the answer. And the answer is this. There we go. So when I click edit, it saves it. So again, I looked this up, close this off. I'm going to go through and you'll see that it actually goes, keeps working until even past 16 and it just continues on and on and on and on. So what's really neat about this is that you get a caustic look. As I start moving this around, you'll notice that the animate the caustics is actually impacting the environment. So I'm going to add a little bit more fun things in here because it's a little plain. So let's say for example, I'm going to stop this just to add a little bit more. I'm going to go back to my light. I'm going to go to Arnold settings and let's go ahead and create an AI fog. And let's see what that gives us. Press play. Cool. So that gives us a little bit of fog. So it makes it feel like there's depth. We can add a little bit of color. So for example, if we wanted to go a little light blue, maybe purple. We can make it look like it's deep water, something like this. We can also decrease the distance if you wanted to. So again, the bigger the value, the closer it's going to get to us. So then we have this really kind of mystical feeling. So that is a really quick way of creating caustics in your environment. I'm actually going to render this out in a second and then we can see what it all looks like. Unfortunately, the fish will not be, well, maybe I'll animate the fish really fast just for the effect, but uh, I'll do that and then I'll render this out and then I'll show you the results. Let's see, I'm going to start here at S and then move the pivot, DV snap, middle mass and snap. Let's go to frame 55 and this little guy is going to be the stiffest fish in the planet. But uh, let's move him over here. Maybe get him down here. 
So I'm going to have this. It's going to look weird. Maybe to rotate him a little bit so he's not so stiff looking. It's looking pretty stiff. All right, let's see what happens. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this, render this out, and I'll be right back. And here's the results. So I took all the frames I brought into After Effects, took it to Encoder, and exported the movie. And this is a result. So you can see my little fish, and then you can see the caustic effect. This is at 24 frames per second. There is still a little noise, so I'd probably go back and uh, either try to After Effect this out or... Um, increase my render settings, but hopefully that was helpful. Um, this is a great way to make your environment look like it's underwater. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, you can leave a comment below and uh, you can also download this and follow me at academicphoenixplus.com. Thank you for everything and I will see you next time.